Hello again and uh, welcome to the corner studio here in my garage and uh, today I needed to check my overhead camera because we're going to be bouncing back and forth from the main camera to the overhead. Um, I want to walk through the uh, basic tools that I use for book binding and it's not a fancy setup. About anybody can put this kit together in a short period of time. It's not that expensive and what I do is not really true book binding but I make these kind of simple folios that I use for different things like bird watching journals or travel uh, logs or I use them for my art sketchbooks and I take like in the case of this one this is just 140 pound art paper and I've basically bound this into kind of a sketchbook or a journal and woo, and uh, I've, I've covered the uh, spine with uh, basically fabric and uh, it's good to go. It's good to use for uh, about whatever it is that you want it for and this is 140 uh, pound watercolor paper. This one is um, got a heavier cover, 140 pound watercolor paper and the interior is just regular old 80-pound uh, drawing paper and it makes a nice little uh, folio here for different purposes and you can see this one has sewn binding and you can see the threads on the outside there and I don't purport to be you know an advanced sewer or um, you know the stitch work for me uh, is not that important but it does help hold the folio together so um, it's part of the process and today we're not actually making a, a folio we're just going to walk through the tools that I use and uh, we'll definitely be posting some uh, videos going forward where I'll actually make a couple of these folios but one of the first things that I do is when um, we're using fabrics for other things I kind of keep an eye on the scrap that comes through the household and if I see something that I like the look of uh, you know like these flowers uh, I think they were a uh, curtain somewhere in the house and uh, this this fabric here which uh, started off as a tablecloth and ended up as something else and I've got uh, part of that fabric now and I hold on to it until um, you know the right folio comes along and then I might use the fabric on it and uh, since we're talking about the fabric you need a glue to um, glue this on the uh, spine of the book or to cover the whole um, you know cover completely and I use this uh, brand here it's called Linico L-I-N-E-C-O and this is the product here it's it's basically kind of a book binding adhesive and um, you can use a regular white glue for this I've used them too and I like this a little better it gets tacky faster and I think it makes a better uh, seal once it's glued up but I have definitely used the common white glue brands like uh, school kids use and uh, it's no problem using that and they're certainly less expensive than this now I'll give you a tip when glues come into the house I always test them and if they've been sitting on the shelf a while I'll uh, pull them down and I'll test them on uh, by gluing a couple of sample things together. I do that uh, over here on the wood, wood shop side of the corner studio. Uh, I'll test wood glues that way and I certainly test these type of glues and I just with a marker pen I'll mark the last time that I tested it and if it looks like it's fairly recently I don't worry about it but if it hasn't been tested I don't chance using glue that might uh, have been frozen or something wrong with it so always test your glue before you use it. Now. Um, part of my kit here I've just assembled this stuff from all over the place and some of it you'll see is just recycled things a lot of it's not expensive um, I pulled this uh, brush here and I use it just for cleaning up my workspace and dusting off the uh, the folios that I'm working on and you can get rid of uh, threads or whatever is in your way with a brush like that and a bigger one like a shop brush with a handle wh whatever you're comfortable using is the right thing. Um, there's different ways when you're trying to get your folios to fold over when you're actually turning these things over and trying to press these um, edges down to get them you know to lay flat. There's different methods for that. Um, 
I've got this, this used to be a rolling pin, and a lot of times I'll fold the paper over and I'll just roll this across the spine to get the papers to lay down. And what I did was I cut the handles off of each end, and I've just got here just what was left of the actual rolling pin. Um, Another couple of things that I'll do, uh, this is an espresso maker and I have found a lot of times if I've got papers that, you know, aren't um, laying down where I want or when I've tried to glue the fabric onto the paper, I'll, uh, I'll use this as just kind of to burnish. Uh, you know, those things. And it, it used to be an espresso where you push the grinds down into the hopper and uh, now it's been repurposed. Um, sometimes I'll reach for a little hammer just to whack things with, and this was kind of a, sh uh, a chasing hammer for metalworking, uh, jewelry, jewelry types. I had originally ordered it, and I'm pointing at my uh, metalworking cabinet over there, and it used to live in there. This is a little Picard hammer, a uh, chasing hammer, and um, I kept reaching for this thing while I was doing uh, book binding and kept using it you know, to tap spines down with and just to do a host of other little chores with. And what happened is I was just reaching for it so much out of the metalworking that I just moved it over to the book binding uh, kit. I said, okay, you're a book binding hammer now. So that's what I use for um, when I need to just pick up a little hammer. Um, to punch the holes in the spine here, uh, when you've got the folio, uh, you know, folded over and ready to go. I've got here a woodworking awl, and this is kind of a heavy-duty awl, and um, it's triangular in shape, and it comes to a point. It's very heavy, and I keep it stuck in this cork here so that I don't get stuck with it by accident. This is actually a pottery tool for just punching a hole, and I found that it works fine, too. Uh, certainly, it was relatively inexpensive uh, item to pick up. You're going to need something to punch a hole. Uh, once you've punched a hole and you're sewing your, um, your, your um, folio spine here, you've got to select a thread of some kind. I like these hemp threads. It gives kind of a natural feel to the project and the um, the alternative is you can use like a synthetic waxed thread like this. Uh, this is pretty heavy duty. It's actually made for something else. Um, there are, um, you know, kind of um, lesser, uh, you know, less thick types of threads. This is, uh, um, you know, just a regular sewing thread here. So you can you can choose whatever you have on hand as the moral of the story, and it'll probably get you where you need to be with the uh, uh, folios getting them sewn together. But I prefer the hemp, and I, I've thrown some of this other stuff in the kit and just not really used it so much. Uh, you got to have some heavy-duty uh, needles, and uh, these needles I've ordered from a sewing supply, and they're just big. I hesitate to call them upholstery needles, but they are just kind of um, bigger needles, and you can get them in a kit, and they're not expensive either. I think I paid about, I don't know, six or eight dollars for a pretty good assortment of them. So that handles the sewing side. Um, I have here uh, you'll see this in a lot of bookbinding kits. These are paper folders, and I actually made these in the shop. This is a very hard wood uh, American beach, and I made these paper folders, and I seldom reach for them in the type of bookbinding that I do. The other methods that I have for getting the paper folded over and um, situated. So I have them in the kit. I made them. I like them, but uh, I don't reach for them that often. Um, cutting tools. I tend to use the uh, Ulfa utility knife, and you know, uh, like I said earlier, I'll. I'll walk through brands whenever you know I use a particular brand. You can use about any kind of brand that you want to use. Uh, I'm not you know necessarily recommending something over another. I'm just saying you know that's what I tend to use. Uh, this is the 25 millimeter which is a pretty wide and heavy duty blade. A lot of times I'll put a glove on when I'm using these to 
prevent accidental cuts. Um, this is a rotary cutter by Olfa and it's more for fabric cutting, but I do use it to, um, and you can see by holding the handle down you extend the blade out. And I use these sometimes for, for trimming up the edges of a folio. And um, we're getting down to the end of it here. I've got a couple of pieces of copper that um, this came in with some of my metalworking and kind of a variety pack of some copper that I ordered. And I saw these and I said, you know, this is going to be great for laying on top of, uh, you know, folios when I have them open and I need to um, keep that open to do something with them. And uh, they're, just, they're just some nice weights to have. Absolutely not an essential for your kit probably, but I do reach for them now and again. I've got several types of uh, tape measures here. This is a, a sewing tape measure and I've got a regular plastic ruler and I also use, uh, I've set some stuff on top of it here, but I also use, this is carpenter square and it's good for laying out um, your folio, making sure that you've got the corners, um, you know, at 90 degrees when you go to cut it. Um, Last but not least, uh, I've got a little bit of book binding tape in here. That's a repair tape. Once in a great while, you might need that for something. I also save uh, peanut butter jars and uh, the uh, caps off of milk jugs. And I have found you can put a little bit of glue in there and they make a good reservoir for taking your brush and uh, getting the glue in. I always use a brush when I'm applying the um, cloth fabric to the outside of a folio. I put uh, the, I, I'll uh, put the glue in the reservoir, I'll get the glue out with the brush and I'll apply the glue with the brush rather than trying to squirt it on here and work directly on, you know, the folio. Uh, cheap pair of scissors for cutting threads and whatnot. And now and again, and it's not an essential, but I keep a, um, a couple of woodworking clamps that I already own these and I have a couple of clean pieces of uh, wood here that um, you can put at the edge of the table and you can put a folio in between these and you can set the clamp, um, you know, against the table here, cinch it down and if you leave that overnight, your folio overnight in here, um, it'll press it out and keep it nice and um, compacted. And sometimes you'll get a result out of that that you can't get out of just um, using, you know, your regular hand tools. And also, I, I don't have to rely on it, but I'm pointing at a part of the table that you might not be able to see. But I've got a vise over there, which is a couple of wood blocks, and uh, I can tighten, uh, you know, a book um, spine into that if I need to. But I seldom use that either because I find most of the times uh, these things, they, you know, they fold over and they, um, you know, they kind of crunch flat when you apply the tools to them. But uh, anyway, uh, just wanted this to be a basic introduction and it's kind of, you could put together a really minimal set of tools for uh, making these folios and uh, what you'll see, and I, I tell people in other videos, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're metalworking or woodworking, whatever. Um, you, end up work, you end up reaching for the same tools over and over again in your shop. And a lot of times, the other stuff you have in a kit, you just don't even really use that often. So about half the things on the table here, uh, when we go to make the folios, you won't even really see me reaching for them. But I've got them in the kit here. And the entire kit, devices, the kit, everything just stores in that shelf there. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Anyway, um, there we have it. What we'll do is um, we'll um, get back together again. Hopefully I'll make a couple of portfolios and um, we invite you to join us for those videos. And thank you for uh, tuning in today and we hope to see you again soon. So till then, take care.